Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox. This is Show of the Week. I'm Andy. And I'm Jane. And this week I went to the arcade and channeled the inner calm of a Jedi Knight on Star Wars Battle Pod. Ah! Ah, he's the boss. And the galaxy was saved, I expect. I also did things this week. Many varied things. Really? Did you? Yes. You didn't just watch the Deus Ex trailer like 700 times? It was 702 times, Jane. But who's counting? Look at this sh Look, right, I'm not one to just jump aboard any old hype train that rolls past, no matter how many life-size fiberglass Jar Jar Bink sculptures Jane may claim to have seen in my attic. But if the Deus Ex Mankind Divided trailer's aim was to get my attention, then mission accomplished. <laughs> What we know so far is that cyborg protagonist Adam Jensen is back, he still smokes like a robot chimney, and he's spent at least some of the two years that have passed since the end of Deus Ex Human Revolution at the beard groomers and down the fancy trench coat shop. Jensen has also acquired a bunch of cool new augmentations, such as a non-lethal energy cannon in his wrist, the ability to remotely control electronics, a knife launcher, a friggin' taser hand, and the ability to charge teleport, looks like. Plus all the usual bog-standard augmentations like your basic entry-level turning invisible like a f***ing sorcerer. The trailer is also super heavy on the Icarus imagery, to the point where we wouldn't be surprised if the final boss of Deus Ex Mankind Divided turns out to be the sun. Later, the wax holding all his orgs in place melts and they all fall off. And embrace what you've become. Set against the backdrop of secret wars, divided loyalties, not-so-secret wars, and global conspiracies, Deus Ex Mankind Divided promises another slice of story-led, play-your-own-way action that might fix the few flaws of its predecessor. If the director's cut of Human Revolution is anything to go by, the developers have already taken on board the fact that they need to mend the wonky boss fights, so all that's left now is the non-inclusion of this subway dancer. Actually, no, leave him in. I've got a new arm cannon that needs testing. So Adam Jensen is back, but this time he's got like a nicer coat and more beard. Cool, what's he up to this time? I don't know, coat shopping, beard having? Come on, you must have been able to work out some of the story from the trailer. Uh, all right, let me have a go. I once thought I could save the world. Now look at it. Mankind Divided sets a stage where the catastrophic events of Deus Ex Human Revolution have turned augmented humans and the regular kind against each other, with Adam Jensen caught up in the violent extremism that follows. There it is. That's the official line on the game's story, but from clues in that tantalising first trailer, we're going to make the following crafty deductions about what's going on. Back in 2011, you got to decide how Deus Ex Human Revolution ended, unless you haven't finished the game yet, in which case, spoilers, if you haven't finished Human Revolution, hit pause now and go finish it. Go on, I'll wait. You're back, well done. So as we all know, augmented humans around the world were hijacked and sent on a violent rampage. People are dying out there. Hundreds of thousands of people driven to the brink of insanity. You wind up on an underwater base and then finally it's up to you to decide whether to tell the world what really happened, cover up the truth, or maybe just blow everything and yourself up and hope humanity sorts itself out. We have little time left, Adam. And might I say, it has been a pleasure. Cheers, Liz. But given how alive Jensen appears in the Mankind Divided trailer, we have to assume he didn't canonically kill himself at the bottom of the ocean. Or if he tried to, he survived intact and floated to the surface somehow? There's probably an org for that. In fact, the new game may well take place after the alternate ending in which you reveal the whole truth to the world, at the risk of fueling the public's anti-augmentation fears, which would explain why everyone's so down on augmentation here in 2029. Human Revolution and Mankind Divided are set well before the original Deus Ex, which was set in 2052. We are the future. Augments in the original game were based on Swish nanotechnology rather than primitive implants and robo-prosthetics, like what Adam Jensen didn't ask for. If the timelines of the recent Deus Ex games and the earlier games are going to join up, several things have to happen, including cybernetics going down the path of nanotech augmentation, which basically means people being filled with teeny tiny swanky nanomachines, or nanites, instead of having rustic artisanal robot pistons bolted on their shoulders like this dude, so retro. 
This should be your fight as well, brother. Jensen's faceted overshield from the Mankind Divided trailer is one signpost pointing in this exact direction. It's called a nano shield, suggesting it's made of nano materials. And speaking of nanites, don't forget the sneaky post credits bit from Human Revolution where Megan Reed sows the idea of a nanite virus. Yes, the nanite virus chimera is quite intriguing. The Illuminati make a comeback in Mankind Divided, growing their influence through a shadowy cabal of global corporations and CGI heads, including the Picus Media Group, technology firm Sarif, and Versalife. They're like ghosts, always in the shadows, always hiding behind lies and proxies. Who are they? The game's narrative director Mary DeMol describes their brand of Illuminati as less mystic Templar lovers and more rich, untouchable jerks. She calls them very powerful one percenters who have always controlled and manipulated society in ways that serve a vision that they have. FYI, Versalife ends up being the main antagonist corporation in the very first Deus Ex game, so again this looks like it's shaping into something that can slot into the fiction of the original Deus Ex. Also according to this email, in the last game Versalife has their own space station so maybe we'll be heading up there in Mankind Divided. Does the Icarus landing system work if you fall from space? Speaking of comebacks, we now know celebrity newsreader Eliza Kassan to be a powerful AI designed to control public information and probably the evolutionary endgame for Siri. Eliza, can you recommend a local restaurant? I want to tell you, Adam, but I cannot. Just like Siri. From the look of the trailer, Eliza and her power rough return in Mankind Divided. There she is, spinning the news again. The danger posed by augmented citizens. We're also taking bets on the return of Megan Reed, who appears in the trailer in a flashback to the Sarif Industries attack at the start of Human Revolution, and Sarif pilot Farida Malik, who here may or may not be flying a VTOL about to fish Adam out of the drink. Oh, and hey, look, more of that Icarus imagery Andy was banging on about. See, Icarus was all about flying. Not swimming, Adam. That's where you're going wrong. Now it's time to see what's written in the comments and on the front of your credit card as the long number followed by the three-digit security number on the back. 378242. Hang on a minute. Ah, that was worth a try. First up, your comments on this video about save points that don't work in real life. Trust us, we tried. But the best save points are the ones based on everyday, ordinary things. It's enough to make you wish they worked in real life. Spoiler alert, they don't. Silent Hamish briefly stops being silent to suggest, what about Silent Hill 2? You just look at a red square of paper and feel things. Feel anything? Bored, mostly. Well, Kanakan -Kan has a useful life tip saying, In a yoga class, I replaced the Zen music with Resident Evil save music. I thought I was the only one who loved it. While Kai Robertson made the following observation, Life has no save points. We are all playing on hard mode. Go us! I'm trying to speedrun life, that's why I drink all that poison. Okay. <laughs> Next up, your comments on the new augmentation cyber dude Adam Jensen broke out in the Deus Ex Mankind Divided trailer that Andy loves so much. Is he watching it again? No! Rainbow Hawk 1993 comments, First time I saw this, my jaw dropped when Jensen showed off his charge ability, which made me immediately think of the Vanguard class from Mass Effect. The effect looks a little bit like the Icarus landing system from Human Revolution too, so maybe this is the opposite of that. So instead of slowing you down to a soft landing, it speeds you up to smash everyone in the face? Suck it, gravity. Mark Broadhurst, meanwhile, complains, Not one Cyber Boost Pro Energy bar in the trailer suggests that he doesn't need to recharge as much. Or maybe he's just mainlining that stuff in some other augment. Or because it'd be a bit weird if he broke off from fighting to eat a flapjack every five minutes. It's like how they don't show Andy's playstyle in the trailers because no one wants to watch three minutes of Adam Jensen sitting in a vent learning guard patrol patterns. <laughs> Suckers. And Darth Revan takes time out of his or her busy schedule of being evil and also secretly being you to say, Triangles, Illuminati confirmed. <gasps> Inception horn sound. Finally, your comments on last week's show in which we examined Mortal Kombat X in all its gory glory. The game is set, for the most part, 25 years after the end of the last game, which paves the way for plenty of new blood in every sense. On the subject of rage quitting, Jimotep has this to say. I love it when a game acknowledges that someone has rage quit. One of my favourites is iDarb. My friend liked it so much he recorded it and plays it if someone quits a game he's in. <laughs> That is great! 
Some commenters had suggestions for 80s movie characters Mortal Kombat could adopt, along with their finishers. Um, Ferris Bueller? He could dance. No. Try Daniel Vergov, who suggests. E.T. in Mortal Kombat would be like, E.T., phone home, then beat the shit out of his opponent with a phone? Um, or The Breakfast Club, but they all count as one fighter. Even worse. Much better is Go For The Nuts, who suggests. How about Marty McFly for Mortal Kombat X? For his fatality, he could travel back in time to when his opponent was a defenceless little baby, put them out in the road, and run over them with the DeLorean. That's genius. Oh, whatever, I quit. <laughs> That's it for show of the week, but oh my god, you're the one the prophecy foretold would press the like button. We always knew this day would come. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week. Okay, I, uh, I have to go apologise to that arcade, so do you want to come with? Yeah. Oh, you can queue up the trailer on your phone and watch it while we go. Ooh, yeah, okay. Ah, oh, ow! <laughs> Why wasn't I looking where I was going? <laughs>